Okay, so we gotta pause that. I'm gonna put this over here, throw it on the charger. Let that get some more juice because, you know, I was jamming over here for a while. Okay, hello. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Let me switch my headphones and put on the pink ones so we can get started. Okay. Welcome, welcome to my channel. It's comedian, tarot reader, Arana the Virgo. And this is the Jokes and Gems podcast. Welcome to my channel. All the new people, make sure you uh, like the video, hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel grow. Uh, this is something that I do each and every Saturday on my website, www.aranathevirgo.com. I also do the videos here on YouTube. This is the video version, okay? Hey, Soul Flower, what up, boo? The podcast version goes out on my website every Saturday, www.aranathevirgo.com. And it also copies to iTunes. So you can check it out on iTunes. You can check it out on my website. I have three podcasts, count them, three podcasts. This is one of them, okay? The other two, they're semi on hiatus, although I've been putting new episodes out on, excuse me, where tarot and comedy collide. And then uh, my other podcast is Dear Black Love Podcast. Where Comedy and Tarot Collide is usually every Tuesday. Dear Black Love Podcast is usually every Friday. This is usually every Saturday. I have a new show coming to YouTube. It's a YouTube-only uh, show called Text Back Tuesday. It's me clapping back at all the fuck shit that people have texted me back over the years. And uh, we're going to have some fun with it. We're going to have some popcorn. Uh, I'm going to have to buy pre-made popcorn until I get my place and then I can actually pop popcorn. We're going to have some popcorn, we go chill, and we go read these motherfucking text messages and have a blast. It's Text Back Tuesday. Come kick it with me every Tuesday on my YouTube channel for Text Back Tuesdays. That's starting April 5th. April 5th. Um, I should be putting this on the podcast, though. So rewind. Let's put it on the podcast. Thank you for joining me. We are recording episode 19. Okay. Uh -huh. Hello, you guys. This is your girl, host. What am I saying? No, we're running that back. That was trash. Trash intro. No. Hello, you guys. What up? And thanks for tuning in. It's your girl, comedian, tarot reader, Arana the Virgo. And it's Saturday, so it is another edition of the Jokes and Jams podcast. Welcome back. This is episode 19. I'm streaming live on YouTube right now. Right now, we got the people in full effect. Shout out to Soul Flower. She already checked in and said, what's up? Okay. To all of my new listeners, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for checking out this podcast. This is a musical history podcast where we celebrate black music. Okay. We celebrate just awesome, awesome geniuses that I love and enjoy. And I make tributes and remakes to all of these wonderful musical genius and, 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 and fabulous people for their artistry that they've given the culture over the years, okay? And uh, it started off with me uh, showing love and paying homage to the one and only Godfather of Soul, James Brown, okay? But then also, also, it led me to pay tribute, you know, I mean, we, we, we not even done giving Motown is just due, like paying Motown, like all they little props. Uh, in fact, today, um, Although I'm paying tribute to another fabulous black institution that created some fine black musicians um, or uh, elevated fine black musicians because they had to audition just to even make the band in the first place. So they already had to be pretty damn good to be a part of the organization, but they elevated it and they made sweet music and fabulous sounds. Yes, we're paying tribute to the one and only fam, you, Florida a and University. Since I'm in Florida, we gotta fuck around with Florida. You hear me? Okay. So, uh, but I've also gone, uh, uh, it's going to be featuring James Jamerson because I, uh, there's been a James Jamerson like tune or what have you that I just found out. I was today years old. You guys, I was today years old when I found out that this was James's song through research. I just learned this today. I was like, James, this James song? He's credited for it and everything. This is, it's, it's called Fever in the Funk House by James Jamerson. He's the bass player of the famed group of musicians. The studio, the studio session musicians of Motown Records, the Funk Brothers, okay? Um, the Funk Brothers collectively uh, were featured on more number one hit songs than the Beach Boys, the Beatles, Elvis, like everybody, okay? They just, the musicians that played on the most number one hit songs, okay? And it was a collective of studio musicians. The bass player, 
that made all the classic bass lines before they brought in Bob Babbitt and other people was James Jamerson, okay? And this, James got his own song. I ain't know nothing about it till today. Actually, James uh, got three songs that are, you know, credited as James Jamerson. And we're going to do some stuff with it. But most importantly, I wanted to uh, pay tribute to fam you. Uh, first and foremost, because, you know, a uh, little, little something about me for the new listeners. Uh, of uh, my uh, returning listeners, you know, my reoccurring listeners already know this because I've talked about it on this podcast. But also, uh, if they have followed my YouTube channel for some time, they may be familiar with my back to school vlog where I went back to my high school and visited my former band because I used to be in band in high school. Okay. I was a drummer. Shout out to all the drummers. If you ever were in marching band, any of the marching bands that you play drums, we family. How y'all doing? Shout out to the percussion sections. Okay. Uh, I was in percussion, my boyfriend was a tuba player, okay? Amen. Now, um, I went back to go visit my band and I got that video on YouTube. It's called Arana Goes Back to School on the Pretty Girls Aren't Funny vlog on this YouTube channel. Make sure y'all check it out. Uh, my YouTube channel for the podcast listeners is www.youtube.com slash C, like cat, slash A-A-R-O-N-A-T-H-E-V-I-R-G-O, Arana the Virgo. I am building a second YouTube channel solely around this podcast, all right, for all you listeners. My second YouTube channel is called Jokes and Jams TV. That's Jokes and Jams TV. I'm building it up as we speak. That's why I'm also trying to get this podcast out a little earlier so I can go back to building that YouTube channel. So make sure you uh, give that channel a subscribe as well. Give it a like. There's one live video up there, and that live video is from my We're, uh, we're Comedy and Tarot Collide podcast. But I'm going to start throwing Jokes and Jams content up on that page. But it's Jokes and Jams TV. That's my second YouTube channel. So listeners of this podcast, y'all definitely need to make it, uh, make sure y'all check it out. Because what I'm going to start doing for my extended family is creating extra episodes, extra podcast episodes that's only available for my extended family members. Okay? Yes, Jokes and Jams TV. That's the, that's the name of my second YouTube channel. Okay? And for the extended family members, which is only $5 a month, you're going to get extra podcast video, uh, extra podcast content. And I have three podcasts. What's up, Risa? Shout out to Risa. I have three podcasts, okay? Dear Black Love podcast, this podcast, the Jokes and Jams podcast, the Music History podcast, uh, Black Music History podcast, and also uh, the Where Comedy and Tarot Collide. That's my hip-hop news and tarot readings podcast, Okay. All three of those podcasts. So if you're a part of my extended family for only $5 a month, you get those extra podcast episodes. You get extended tarot readings by uh, Zodiac Signs. Um, you get some free Arana merch, and there's Arana merch that'll be discounted. And you also get access to my weekly series, my weekly open mic series I'm building. It's, it's comedy and poetry called Pass the Mic with Arana the Virgo. Listen, guys, especially list, uh, podcast listeners, if you are a poet, if you got some fire poetry, Okay, I need you to do me a favor and I need you to go to www.gumroad, G U M R O A D, gumroad.com, slash Arana the Virgo merch, merch, M E R C H, Arana the Virgo, just like my YouTube page, merch, M E R C H, and hit follow. Okay, hit follow and drop me an email so I can contact you and feature you on the weekly series. Pass the mic with Arana the Virgo, okay? Those episodes will only be viewed by people who are members of the um, extended family. What I will do is cut together little promo videos and put it on Jokes and Jams TV and put it on my YouTube channel, my Arana the Virgo YouTube channel, so people can know that content is being created and this is what's going on over there. But in order to have access to it, you got to sign up and become a part of the uh, extended family. Now, once again, being a part of the extended family We'll get you episodes to that, extended podcast and, 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 and special secret podcast episodes, and also extended tarot readings for your Zodiac sign. You'll get all of that weekly, okay, for just $5 a month, all right? So go to www.gumroad, G-U-M-R-O-A-D dot com slash Arana the Virgo merch, M-E-R-C-H, okay? And that's how you can take advantage of that. Now, before I uh, hit play on this podcast, I was telling YouTube about it, but I have uh, an upcoming YouTube series that's going to be on my uh, Arana the Virgo channel only. It's going to be every Tuesday. It's called Text Back Tuesdays, okay? Starting April the 5th, Text Back Tuesdays, where we're going to get popcorn. Y'all going to join me on YouTube. And I'm just going to clap back to the over 2,000 
text messages I received uh, where people sent me all kind of fuckery. And, you know, we gonna get involved. Some of them, uh, we gonna, since it's live, y'all can respond in the chat and we go like clap back at these like weirdos. Think of ridiculousness meets, uh, I don't even know, Dear Abby, okay? Ridiculousness meets Dear Abby. That's what the fuck we doing. We, it's text Back Tuesdays. I'm young, yeah, I'm petty as fuck. You know it, Risa. Petty as fuck. Uh, text Back Tuesdays, every Tuesday, right here on uh, Arana the Virgo, on my YouTube channel. I'm getting popcorn, okay? And we going through it. And for an hour on, on Tuesdays, it's an hour long show, we, we clapping back. Well, I'm clapping back, but y'all can come, come in the podcast. I mean, not the podcast. Y'all can come in the comments and chime in when I say, what should I text back? Hmm. What, 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 what should I say? You know what I'm saying? And what I think I'll do is people that actually got good replies that I think are funny, I'm going to lace you with some Marana merch. Because a bitch got new t-shirts right now. Huh? A bitch got new t-shirts right now. Huh? I'll lace you with some free Marana merch. Uh, no hatred formed against me shall prosper. Uh, pocket watching is the move of a hater. Uh, those are the two, uh, the two new ones. Love does not hurt. Those are some truth relations. And Jesus did not die on the cross for you to settle. Those are my truth relation t shirts. I also got my mama told me to tell you to mind your business, bitch. Bitch ain't on the t shirt, but that's how I feel inside. So, you know, if those t shirts <laughs> resonate with you, and if you, you have a funny clapback on Clapback Tuesdays, I'm gonna lace you. It's a giveaway. I'm gonna lace you with some free Ronald merch. Cause that's the type of life we live right now in these streets. Um, so those are some things that's going on. Uh, starting April 5th, so y'all can tune into that on my YouTube channel. Uh, and then every Wednesday, starting next Wednesday, which is March 31st, uh, for all of my extended family members, I'm gonna be starting my uh, weekly open mic, uh, past the mic with Ronald the Virgo. This is gonna be me filtering through all my comedy material putting together a comedy album that I'll be releasing on uh, releasing on iTunes, uh, releasing on Amazon, and also releasing in my e-store. And also on eBay as well. And also, on, yeah, I said Amazon, right? Yeah, Amazon, my e-store, my website, iTunes, and eBay is where I'm releasing all of it, okay? So those are all the platforms that I'll be releasing that, and y'all can look for that summer 2021. Uh, so we starting next Wednesday because I'm putting this. I ain't playing around in these goddamn streets. Do you hear me? So, um, oh, and one more thing. One more thing. I'm releasing my poetry book. Uh, you should have put, but, but what? You should have put B in the T-shirt. That's hilarious. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I can always make upgrades. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Lisa Fuller, we'll see. I can always make upgrades. That, that could be the second edition. You know what, though? Um, I didn't put a Truth Elations Bible verse. Yeah, because uh, my comedy merch, everything comes from the fictional book of Truth Elations. This true revelations. To get, she said, I'm still buying it. You better get on down. I appreciate the support. Support my little small black business. Now, look. Um, Truth Elations, the fictional Bible book, Truth Elations, it's, it's true and revelations together. It's Truth Elations. It's that street truth. Okay, that street truth. Things that Jesus would co-sign on because he a real nigga. You feel me? Now, um, <laughs> ah, dude, I love God. God told me I'm play I'm petty. Uh, I'm buying some merch too. I appreciate it. Nigga, I, listen, I ain't even waiting for people to buy merch. I'm buying my merch. People send a picture and talk about my clothes. Bitch, I'm about to lace myself in all this shit. What? T-shirts and leggings about to be my stilo. T-shirts, leggings, some bomb-ass heels, or some bomb-ass sneakers. I'm living my life out here. Anywho, oh, I would love like some like some fly-ass like snakeskin shoes or some shit. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna live my little life. NT way, NT way, NT way. Um. Uh oh, my mic fell. NT way, NT way, NT way. Um. <laughs> God called me silly. It's listen. Ain't, ain't nobody got a better sense of humor than God, I tell you that. God is like the ultimate comedian. And sometimes God is petty. I love him. God is petty. Sometimes. Sometimes God be petty. Like, didn't I tell you not to? Why are you doing? You know what? I right, I'm going to show your ass. You be like, why? But no. No, I'm going to show your ass. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Anywho, 
from the fictional book <laughs> of Truth Relations. That's where my uh, comedy t-shirts come from. So, like I said, to answer Lisa, I might make a revision on my mama told me to mind your business. B, B I H. We might have to go on here and do that. Mama told you, you mind your business, bitch. You need to mind your business. Or maybe just, bitch, you need to mind your business. B, you need to mind your business. Just any, you know, we might, we might. Uh, Truth Relations, we'll figure it out. I'll put, uh, I'll put an angel number on top of that. If you've been peeping game too, for those that haven't been aware, all of my Truth Elation shirts, they have their, they have angel numbers attached to them. <laughs> so once I start doing my angel number blog, it's really gonna be hot in these streets. Cause like, you know, as people learn angel numbers and stuff like that, like the joke is gonna be even funnier. It's like, ah, you know what? This bitch is silly. Anywho, uh, no, what the, the, the no hater formed against me shall prosper though is a flip on Isaiah 54, 17. For those that didn't know, that's, it's a flip. Isaiah 54, 17 is actually a real Bible verse. No, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I just flipped it because there's no haters formed against me shall prosper. In the book of truth, Galatians, though. For those that don't know. Okay, amen. Praise him. Now, uh, as far as this podcast is concerned, I've been wanting to do something to pay tribute to uh, FAMU. And I've been on the fence about what I wanted to do to pay tribute to them. For a minute, I was going to do they coming to America they're, they're, they made a whole tribute to coming to America and they version is so fly because they got the full instrumentation and then they do like a 40 minute drum break and as a drummer I could appreciate that shit right but I was like you know um, and I still might I still might because I'm still a com uh, coming to America kind of sore I don't give a fuck what people got to say about uh, the remake the part two I, you know listen we ain't even go we ain't even gonna hash on that we ain't gonna we ain't gonna linger on that I'm still coming to America, one, kind of sore, okay? And so I still appreciate that damn thing song. Um, but I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do that, right? Especially since in the month of March, the movie came out, et cetera, et cetera. And they, they, they got other, like, you know, classics and hits that I enjoy. And they're just such a talented marching band. Excuse me. So I'm deciding that I want to, you know, pay tribute to them using their own fight song. I want to use, uh, hilarious. Uh, I want to use their own fight song, you know, uh, which is Say La La. Because they harmonize. Let me tell you something. FAMU was one of the first bands to start harmonizing while they play. They going to give you this hot instrumentation, but they got vocals for your ass as well. And it's so it's so beautiful when they do that shit. Um, why am I paying tribute to FAMU? Um, to run it back for some of the new followers who may not be aware, FAMU was our sister school. It was our mentor school back when I was in high school and I was in the marching band. Uh, because they were such a dope ass marching band, um, people who had ambitions to be in the marching band when they were in college, they wanted to go to FAMU. FAMU was like the school to do that. Um, and if people didn't go to FAMU, another, rela another relationship, no. Another, somebody's playing Tupac in the background, it's crazy. Um, another uh, university, right? Another uh, black school that was like dope with those field shows was Tennessee State. A lot of people love TSU and want to go to TSU. Um, Mississippi Valley was uh, something that, you know, you would hear a lot. But, oh, Grambling. Grambling, baby. Grambling used to have a squad too. Grambling used to get in some people's asses back in the day. We came from Grambling used to be about their business. So, you know, FAMU was like that school, right? And then, you know, TSU was really dope, Tennessee State University. Grambling was on fire. And I came from Bethune Cookman College had a reputation too, and they're also in Florida, okay? So um, those were like some of the schools that like had hot ass marching bands, right? Uh, specifically though, FAMU, the FAMU, FAMU Rattlers, um, they drove away, they gone. The FAMU Rattlers, uh, members of our marching band, right, would graduate from my high school. They would go to FAMU. They would, you know, be in their band, the Marching 100, and they would come back and like teach us. They would help us choreograph our field shows. Uh, we, had, we had a lot of people uh, who were like staff at FAMU, right? And, and, and Morgan Park alumni that would come back and work on our field show with us. So, you know, we were like the only band in Chicago, right? That was doing the rattle. 
because that was from Fred, and we was, you know, we was they little, little, little sisters, little brothers. You know what I'm saying? And fam, you they had to rattle and shit and stuff like that. So the minute we start, soon as we 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 hit that drum cane, da 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 and the drum majors be showing off and shit. Do 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 do. That's the wait. Let me tell you something. Drum majors. I need to do a sketch about drum majors. Drum majors be so extra, but it's so dope though. Like. When it comes to like marching bands and field shows, honey, that's where the slang go off came from. Cause drum majors would be males, they'd be females and all that, but that's their time to shine and they lead the band. They got the, they got to give you all they fever and shit. They got the, that's what the song is gonna be called. Uh, uh. I love when things like are like, like synchronized and it just fell in my spirit and shit. I'm explaining fever in just a minute. Talking about the goddamn drum majors. This is how I came up with the shit. Okay, anywho. They, uh, that that's they when they lead the band and shit. They 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 start off right, you know, very army like, you know, very their march is real technical and shit. But once we get into a field show and it's time for the drummers to like do their thing, drum majors have a well at least our drum majors did. They have a cape and shit. <laughs> they get to. <laughs> They coming out and shit, and they they on fire and shit. They shimmy and shit. Do 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 do. We had majorettes and flag girls, y'all. So the majorettes they had on like these um rhinestone ass stockings and these um these body suits with batons and they marching and shit and they giving you all the fever and shit and drum majors just turning out. We, I remember one drum major was rattling so hard, his suspenders fell, his, his suspenders came loose on his pants and they started falling. He, he, he had to like hold them up and shit. Didn't miss, a, wait, wait, he didn't miss a step. He, he missed a, like nothing. Like, like was totally in sync, like didn't fuck up nothing. With the pants falling, rattling so goddamn hard. And honey, it was, it was, it was fun. It was good times, and for that reason, my kid's probably gonna be in the march band. Fuck that, right? So, um, fam, you they just they just they're just awesome, right? So, in the midst of all of this stuff that's been happening, right? I've been doing things to try to find my happy place. Okay, now music tends to be my happy place, always has been, right? Uh, Cause I'm just one of them people, right? Um, I, I I'm, a, I'm I'm like the playlist queen and shit. I get me a little playlist going. I'll clean my whole motherfucking house if you let me. I get a playlist going. I'm cooking, making meals and shit. I get a playlist going. I can do a, a four to 10 hour drive. I'm a road comic. Well, you know, I, I was a road comic for years. I can do a four to 10 hour drive without blinking. If I got the right playlist, you see what I'm saying? So I just be in my little zone. I be in my mode. Oh, and I'm a, um, you know, uh, I'm a broadcast journalism major. And I, I used to have my own little radio show. And I was so unorthodox with that bitch. My show didn't have no name, nothing, y'all. I just would be playing whatever the fuck I wanted to play. <laughs> my program director used to be like, Rhonda, what? <laughs> Where are you? Your show be so all over the place. You just be playing music, nigga. You don't have no, like, you ain't sticking to no format. You ain't sticking to an era. You ain't sticking to a genre. You ain't sticking to a artist class, nothing. East Coast, West Coast, down South music, Midway. You just all over the board. You going from fucking like <laughs> Alexander O'Neill <laughs> to Wu Tang. Bitch, what is you doing? <laughs> what is your show about? Like, I just be all over the place. But I be having fun. I be in my bag. So, Auntie Who. All of that happened, right? Well, I was making playlists and shit in this tent back when I was in California, right? And um, I don't, I, probably when I was making one of them sketches that I put on my page on Instagram, uh, I came across like a band that was like cold as fuck. Pause for sound. a band that was cold as fuck and something from FAMU, something from their like YouTube page, like somebody who was a member of FAMU or whatever, who was posting like their performances and shit, it showed up on my YouTube. And I like, you know, I'm like, oh, FAM be cold. FAM, like FAM was the one that taught us, you know, so I started listening, 
honey, I didn't favor it in so many damn videos. I didn't went down memory lane, like, uh. And so, you know, since this podcast, right, is all about sharing music history and, you know, uh, big up in, you know, music legends and all of that, and just sharing our culture and being happy about like dope ass music, okay? Um, we got, we got the, we got to show fam some love. We just have to. And I'm in Florida now. We have to show fam some love, even though they all the way up in like Jacksonville or whatever. Um, or no, nope, I think they're in Tallahassee actually. Hold on, I gotta think. They might be in Tallahassee. They ain't one of them. Tallahassee or Jacksonville? Let me think. They gotta be in Jacksonville, I think, cause Tallahassee, I want to say, is University of Florida. No, that's Gainesville. That's Gainesville. Nigga, I'd have been all over this state messing around with colleges and, and performances and all kind of shit. Uh, but anti who? They didn't want to. Tallahassee, Jacksonville, they didn't want to know. Okay, so anywho, um, I just, uh, y'all got to, y'all got to check them out. They're at Marching 100 on Instagram, okay? Um, they're, uh, one of the historically black colleges. And that's another reason why I want to pay tribute. It got really hot in here. That's crazy. I don't know if it's because the sun is setting or I'm doing so much moving, but I'm glad I have these towels. Okay. Now, pause for sounds. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm still rolling on. Okay. We good. Okay. So, um, Historically, black colleges uh, overall, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just They just need their love regardless because the thing about it, the history of all historical black colleges, right, was, you know, back when we were enslaved, right? 1863, 1865, we got free, right? And now it's this whole to-do about what is we going to do, right? And it, it was like leaders in our communities People that was like, okay, so we got to make sure we stay educated. We got to make sure we have our own institutions. We got to make sure that, you know, we're creating professionals. We want to create productive members of society. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Productive members of society. Somebody got to be the teachers. Somebody got to be the educators. Somebody needs to be, you know what I'm saying? We need to, you know, have bankers and all types of, you know, occupations and you know people in the community and what i can really really respect and what i love and enjoy about historical black colleges i have more of an appreciation for it now as an adult than i ever did when i was younger um mostly because and i made a whole sketch about this but i was like they don't they need better marketing you know what i'm saying because when people talk about going to college and things like that depending on where you grew up and depending on you know who you're listening to they don't you don't really oh and or 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 um unless you have been raised by graduates of historical black institutions that's the other part because even like the friends i had the ones that were interested in going to hbcus had parents who graduated from hbcus they got you know um their their degrees from there both my parents went to chicago state <laughs> They went to the college that was up the street from my house. I didn't want to go there. I was like, no. Nah. And they tried to get me to go to Chicago State. I was like, no, nigga, I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. I didn't get these straight A's just to go up the street. Nigga, I want to see the country. Better yet, I want to see the world. I ain't really trying to go to Oxford. I ain't really trying to be on that. But, bitch, I'm not going up the street. So, you know, the closest compromise we made was Central Illinois. Anyway. But I really was feeling Hampton. Hampton was like my number one choice at the time. It's just they didn't provide like funds where I could go. And I had two full scholarships. It just didn't make sense. To, you know what I'm saying? And then my mama was already tripping because she really, 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 really didn't want me to go. She didn't really want me to be far. She wanted me to be up the street. So it was that issue as well. But as an adult, right, like having, you know, having a degree, moving on and all that shit, right, I can honestly say people that I know that attended HBCUs, I kind of like, you know, I, I kind of envy their little college experience, their little college ties, because it matters. Like HBCUs do a good job, regardless of what, you know, like, because, you know, some people, oh, they're funded by corporations. Oh, we can do that's fine. That's fine. That's cool. But they're still open. And they're still, a, um, um, what am I trying to say? An environment, right? that you know fuels black excellence an environment that teaches us to love ourselves rely on each other have a brotherhood and sisterhood with each other and there are so many especially in today's world child there's so many areas in society where we don't have that 
where you know motherfuckers be battling against each other and fighting over fighting against each other on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Whereas in those communities, in those environments, we kicking it together, we learning together, we partying together, we uplifting each other. You know what I'm saying? And that's good. And because of the foresight of the people who knew that this would be important hundreds of years ago, these uh, institutions exist and they still around. And I think it's important to keep them around, especially with a lot of stuff that's happened in recent years. I'm like, yeah, uh, we need to start going back. Like even, the, even dude, even the sports talk, cause y'all know, like I like sports and shit too. Even sports talk, it's like, why don't we just send our best and brightest athletes to these HBCUs since they sitting up here doing these NCAA tournaments and they ain't getting paid no way. We might as well pull these motherfuckers back, tell them to take their ass down, <laughs> tell their ass to take their ass down to TSU, take their ass down to Howard, take their ass down to uh, Hampton and all these other schools. And, and blow up their sports programs and put their sports programs back into the school because if the sports pay for the school and we got the best and the brightest, ta-da, bitch. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm for that. I think it's cute. I think it works. So anyway, um, because of all of that, because of everything that happened in 2020 and we really, really are trying to move forward in culture like, yeah, let's get our just due. Uh, especially since we ain't talking about the reparations. Let's <laughs> keep it cute as a community, okay? And celebrate ourselves and show love and, you know what I'm saying? Um, embrace our culture and celebrate and all that. And nobody, when you really think about it, like nobody ever, you know, shames or, you know, looks down on anybody else celebrating their culture. And I just, uh it should be dope and it should be awesome anytime we decide we want to get together and celebrate our shit. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, something just popped in my head, chow, about something years ago. But um, when you think about it, right, different culture, we got St. Patrick's Day, okay? That's where the Irish get together and be like, bitch, you know what it is. You know what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and whether we Irish or not, motherfuckers get together, they'll drink, they'll do shit. You know what I'm saying? And nobody, you know, be tripping. We just let people do their thing. Cinco de Mayo, same shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, M we got MLK Day, but... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, we be trying to, you know, have, like, parades and celebrations and shit. But even in Chicago... Because MLK Day is in fucking January and January's cold as fuck, we don't even have our black parade until August. And it's called the Bud Billiken Parade. That nigga fictional. He ain't even real. We, we didn't even bother to like find somebody black that we could celebrate who birthday is in July, August. Michael Jackson's birthday is in August. We could have called it Michael Jackson Day. No, I should call Bud Billiken. A motherfucker that don't even exist. You know what I'm saying? Stupid shit. That's to get Chicago, Chicago, I'm looking at you. I'm reading you. Name it after somebody who did some real shit. Hell, I'll get somebody, anybody. Who the fuck is Bud Billiken? Fuck. Anyway. I mean, or, or, um, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, the Bud Billiken parade was something that the Chicago Defender, like, really spearheaded. And if y'all know, the Chicago Defender was made popular from, you know, people who moved from Dallas. It was very, very uh, instrumental in the Great Migration as far as Chicagoans were concerned. People who had moved from down south that came to Chicago, they had that newspaper specifically designed for black you know, Chicago and hey, this is what's going on. These are the neighborhoods you need to move to. This is stuff you need. Like that's how we communicated with each other as a community through that paper, the Chicago Defender. One of my favorite poets of all time, Langston Hughes. You know, was 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 one of one of the you know uh, architects of the paper. Okay, now I don't know if he founded and invented it. I feel like it was James S. Abbott. If if my Black History. Um, uh, my black history shit serves me correctly, but y'all can Google me. You got y'all can Google that and check. Um, I ain't worried about Facebook, but thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. I believe it was James S. Abbott, but if, if black history knowledge serves me correctly, but y'all check that out. Check Google, check Wikipedia. I believe he found it, the Chicago Defender, but Langston Hughes was who made it popular. He had this fictional character, Jesse B. Simple, right? That he was taking like, you know, 
allegories and situations and, and laughable circumstances, but they was relatable to our experience as black people. And we had the Chicago Defender, okay? The Chicago Defender is behind, or used to be behind, it's been some years, I don't know what the fuck they doing in Chicago, a lot of shit didn't change, but it used to be behind the Bud Billiken Parade. We should just call it the Chicago Defender Parade. I mean, you know, why we name it after motherfucker that don't exist? That's all I'm saying. We, you know what I'm saying? Our history, we, 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 uh, we gotta get it together. Get it together. But anyway, um, for uh, musical purposes and stuff like that, I won't play the songs here on YouTube. So y'all gotta tune in to today's episode to hear what I'm using, what I'm coming up with to create the Arana remake, the tribute to FAMU featuring James Jamerson. With a song that I was today years old learning that James made the song. This is James' song. I was like, yeah. Because I, you know, listen, y'all know how, how, listen, I'm a James Jamerson fan, stand, whatever you want to call it at this point. This motherfucker was called. I spent uh, a, a whole 20 minutes before I hit play on this podcast and on this video just listening to the details of what he played. And then I found like um, an isolated uh, bass line to Fever in the Funk House, which is what the song is called. Somebody else was uh, making a cover version, and baby, they did a nice job, but their fingers didn't quite hit all the notes James played. I was like, it's missing notes, and the fact that my ear is catching it lets me know how cold James is. I had to hear it again. I was like, no, nope, because they missed that note. That note is in there. They ain't hit that. This dude is, this dude is, is un man, this dude is otherworldly. This dude is crazy. Like, like, oh my God. And he's doing it with one finger? That guy's crazy. Uh, it's, it's, listen. So, uh, I'm going to convert this tent into the hit factory. We're going to see what I come up with. Uh, check out the podcast, www.runofthevirgo.com, to hear the full version of what's happening. Uh, Y'all know I'm going to put uh, a version of it up here on the YouTube channel, which reminds me, I got to put the Bulls remake on YouTube. I don't think I've ever uploaded that on, on the channel. So that'll go up here, and that'll go up on Jokes and Jams TV as well. Uh, I'm trying to remember everything, so I don't leave nothing out. Google that. Google who who created the Chicago Defender. I believe it was James S. Abbott. Uh, but yeah, FAMU, shout out to them. Shout out to historical black universities uh, as a whole anyways. But uh, y'all got to go on YouTube and check out some of their stuff, honey. They be getting down. They are awesome. They are like everything. Y'all need to check it out. Especially if you in Florida, y'all need to check it out. Um, What else? I think that's everything that I want to do for now. And I also think, especially with my Jokes and Jams TV channel, from here on out, I'm going to start incorporating that copyright of 1976, uh, the fair use. Uh, because the thing, especially when I took communications and law, my law and communications course, uh, whenever you take something and you're paying tribute to it and you're crediting the people who created it, but you're, you know, making a derivative work that is an original work, but it's incorporating it and all of that. It's not copyright infringement. And, you know, I know that there's all kind of, you know, there was all kind of stuff that was happening and stuff. And I have to, you know, make sure I dot all my I's and cross all my T's because there's just haters that exist that just don't want you to do nothing. And, and the more I look at, you know, um, people making cover works and all that stuff and covering James's stuff and their channels are monetized and they are right and they good. I'd be like, why are they coming down on my channel so hard? And I'm, you know, not only am I celebrating these are educational purposes, I want people to, you know, research this. I want people to look up this music. I want people to play this music. I want people to buy the music. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, girl, whatever. Uh, I think that's it. That's all for right now. I'm gonna get busy because there's other stuff that I want to do. Uh, yeah, that's it. And also, just on the aside, first and foremost, as always, y'all, thank y'all for supporting this channel. I appreciate y'all more than words. Your girl is doing everything she can to transform this into her new house, her new her new house that doubles as a studio, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, working on that as well, because we got to get the hell up out of here. Um, and it's been a long process, but it's moving forward. And, you know, keep me in your prayers as far as that's concerned, child, because people crazy. NT who, what else? Uh, check out the Truth Relationship t-shirts. I'm so excited about rocking mine. I'm so excited. I, don't, I Listen, I'm about to rock more. And I'm going to probably start putting them in different colors. And I can't wait until my YouTube channel expands where they let me start 
selling the merch directly from YouTube. Uh, I've seen people who have less than 100,000 followers that do that. And I'm like, how the hell can I do that? I've seen people that got 22,000 followers and they got uh, a merch store on their YouTube. I'm like, I got 15. Like, damn. So yeah, make sure y'all tell y'all friends and tell people so we can get these subscribers up so I can put a merch bar or something, a spring.com or something on my YouTube. Uh, that's it, that's all for now. I'ma go create and get in the studio and I'll be, I'll share it later on the channel, but y'all can check it out at www.aronalavirgo.com. All right, lay